Welcome, everybody. Yeshukoach. Could you hear me? Do you want to hear me? Yes. Uh, that was the right answer. Um, um, Yeshukoach for everyone coming out. Erev Yantif to uh, grow, to learn, to connect together. Um, today's shear is being sponsored by Louis Nishmas, Daniel Dove, and Shlomo Zev, and Rhoda Bela, and I don't have the general one. I should know it by heart. Rebetzin, tell me. Daniel Ben David. Leave it You would think after three years I would know this. Leave it at that? Okay. I apologize. I only get what I get, and then what I don't get, I don't get, and then I don't know what I'm getting. Um, my friends, today is a day that's the beginning of a new world. It's Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Every day of Nisan, they say Nisan is HaChodesh Hazel Lechem Rosh Chodeshim. Every day is like a Rosh Chodesh. Every day has a certain power to it. It's not like a regular day. This is a day of change. It's a day of power. We could bring Mashiach today. So I'd like to start with saying um, a capital to Hillam out loud. And let's really together in the koach of Nashim Sitkanios, in the koach of Limur HaTorah, in the koach of Rosh Chodesh, think about each and every one of those Shvuyim, each and every one of those Chayalim, each and every family that has been affected. Klal Yisrael, who is in an Eitzara that is unprecedented, not only here but in the world, that Hashem should just bring the Gula. Like, uh, enough is enough. We'll do together Kapitel Kuf Kaf Aleph, otherwise known as 121. So I'm sure you know it by heart because we've been saying it for the last, unfortunately, six months. Who's counting? And uh, you may have it on your phones or in a book or whatever uh, things you use. We'll say it together. Shir la malot esa enai el harim ma'ayin yavo ezri. Ezri me'im Adonai ose shamayim va'aretz. Al yitain la mot raglecha al yanum shomrecha. Hine lo yanun velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, Adonai tzilcha al yad yaminecha. Yomam hashemesh lo yakeka v'yareach balayla. Adonai yishmor cha mikol ra yishmor et nafshecha. Adonai yishmor seitcha uvoecha meata ve'ad olam. Achenu kol beit Yisrael. Hanesuni batzara uveshivya. Ha'ondim ben bayam uven bayabasha. Hamakom yerachem alehem. V'yotziyem mitzara lirvacha. Umeafela la ora, umishibud ligula, hashta bagala, ubizman kariv, and omar amen. Yes, ma'am. Rosh Chodesh is for women. Rosh Chodesh Nisan has its own power in terms of this is Hakamas Hamishkan. So this is the time when the Shechina came down, and this is the time when Shechina can continue to come down. Women are the Koach of Geula to bring Shechina down. We just have to tap into it. Like I woke up this morning and I said, when is it going to happen? Like that, that was my first thought. You know, like you just feel it in the air. Like you didn't need to hear my morning uh, musings. That was an alliteration, morning musings which is part of the title on that book, which is a must-read, Birkos HaShachar, 15 Morning Brachos. And I will say is that this is a time that if we've been, I can't do it, I've tried, take on a project, learn with a chavrusa, learn with a group of friends. The Birkos HaShachar is a great book to learn together. It's on sale outside. You want to... 
Did everyone hear what she said? A little bit louder? Yeah, so I highly recommend it. It's on sale outside. For not an extra price, you can have it signed. And in a few years' time on eBay, you could sell the signature and get your money back with, uh, with dividends. Worship Baruch Atah Adonai Lein Mel Cholam Shakol Neav Dvorom. Okay, for those of you who have never met me before, you take me only half seriously. Which half that you have to figure out? Let's begin, my friends. We're not here to hear about smiles. We're here to hear about life. And I wasted a lot of time, but I didn't waste time at all. So let's start. Zmira, until what time do I have to go so I know exactly? 10.20, great, okay. We're going to learn together one part of the Haggadah, which is clear from the uh, title, Dayenu. Now, here's the challenge in Dayenu, and I'm going to tell you we all face this same challenge. We have the Arami Oved Avi section, which is the key part of the Haggadah, where we darshan out the psukim from Mr. Farmer that he says when he brings the Bikurim. Most of us have no clue of what those darshaning psukim are all about. Okay, it's a little bit dry. If we get to the Esther Makos, that very, gets very exciting. Rabbi Yossi Aglili says there'll be more Makos on, on, on the water. You're trying to figure out the math. You've had too much wine or grape juice to drink. And this is getting a little <laughs> bit tiring. And then we get to Dayenu. <sighs> And what happens in Dayenu? We begin to sing. Da, da, I'm not singing, don't read it, right? And we're singing it in your head, and we go through Ilu, Otsi, Otsi, Anu, right? And then Da, yeah. and we run through all the 15 levels, and we feel great. What we don't really do with Dayenu is to stop and actually what? Experience. We just feel like, oh, this is a song, let me enjoy it. And you should, but we lose out on it message and meaning and that's what we're here today to try to understand so we understand that the piyot i'm in source number three because i can't read source number two the piyot <coughs> was incorporated as a supplement <coughs> to the central sepur of yitzhak mitzrayim to expand our expression of gratitude beyond the redemption from mitzrayim to include other chasadim that hashem has performed for us the 15 level of kindnesses listed here were a continual chain of goodness that Hashem bestowed upon us as a people, beginning with the Tziat Mitzrayim and ending with the Beis HaMikdash. I, I, I didn't bring Dayenu here because it's something I am sure we are all what? Familiar with, you can go home. I'm not looking at the specifics. I want to look at the overall picture. And I want to raise a number of questions on Dayenu. The way we begin Dayenu in the Hebrew is in source number three. Kama ma'alo tovo lamakom aleinu. Now, the way many people translate it, continuing in three, the omnipresent has bestowed so many favors upon us. What word means favors? Really, that's what ma'alo means, favors? Yeah, yeah, so, so, higher steps, so where do you get favors? I don't know either, but that's how we translate it. We translate it as how many kindnesses and favors Hashem does for us. A better translation, look, our first question is, how do you translate the word malo? That's the first question. Then let's go back into the phrase here. Kama malo tovo lamakom aleinu. Now, we've been translating it, has bestowed upon us. Is that what the word lamakom means? No. Let's take a look in source number four. Why do we say lamakom, which means to Hashem? We should say mehamakom, from Hashem to us. And if we're, the references are levels of kindness bestowed toward us, source five, the wording should have been lanu, to us, not aleinu, upon us. So basically that whole line in simple English makes what? No sense. Okay, we got that. Why does it make sense? It's irrelevant. Just understand that it makes no sense. The Milos Tovos, Lamakom, Aleinu, makes no sense. Our next question. What is the meaning, continuing in five, of the word Dayenu said at the end of every line? 
it means, it seems to be saying that this would have been enough for us in terms of our national well-being and development. And that's how we translate it. Had Hashem only done this for us, then what? Dayenu, it would have been enough. And then you get the famous four. Had he taken us to our C9 and didn't give us the Torah, it's like going to a perfume factory and we get the smell of Torah. Like, how could it be we get to the Torah, we get our C9, we don't get the Torah, it makes no sense. But can we really say this? How can we say that Hashem had taken us out of Egypt, not give us the Shabbos or Torah, it would have been enough. Apparently, oh Hashem, who gave them to us and demanded their full observance, felt it would not have been enough. So Dayenu does not mean it would have been enough. Okay, so now that I understand, say, say it, what? Okay, good, good. So now you're answering it, but then I take away my job. So if they pay you instead of me, then you can step. You're doing great. Yes. Before we sing, this is the opening line. It's in source number one where I did quote a little bit of Dayenu. Thank you for asking. This is the opening line of Dayenu. And then, had he brought us out of Egypt and not executed judgment for the Egyptians, it would have sufficed, for, sufficed us. Now. The last question we need to understand is why there are 15. What is the significance of 15 kindnesses, levels, steps? Uh, good, 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 good. Okay. So my friends, in basic English, the opening phrase makes no sense. Dayenu makes no sense. What is it doing here and why 15? You want to add? Sure. To question. Would it have been enough? Very nice. Would it have been enough? It gets to really think about it. Would it have been enough? Good. I like it. I like it. Good. I accept it. My friends, this is what I'd like to do. If I were to just to teach about Dayenu today, I feel I would have been neglecting your, your hours worth of, uh, of time here. Dayenu is coming at the end of Magid, right before the Hallel section of Magid. It is the culmination and the preparation for the height of the Seder. And therefore, what Dayenu has in it are the key components of what the Seder night is about. So I'd like to briefly, very briefly do, is to speak about the two essential themes of Magid, the goal of the night, then see how on two levels Dayenu fits into both of these constructs, and then end with the third level, which is a combination of both. So altogether, how many levels will we have? Three. Good, I'm glad somebody is following me here. And if we can turn off our, our phones, Rev Kluger. <laughs> Source six, I theme number one of Seder night. Some things in life are visible and clearly perceptible to us. Our body, we can see, we can hear, we have visible things. This is a table. I can feel it. This is a chair. Thank God it's holding me, right? There are certain things that are concrete. These facts are distinct and tangible to us. There are other truths in life that, although there are basic realities, are not so obvious and perceptible. The fact that Hashem renews the world and sustains us at every moment, that Parnassus is from Hashem and that whatever happens in the world is from Hashem, are truths that we know and believe, but are nevertheless not obvious and tangible. This is called Hester or concealment. In this world, godliness is concealed from us and not perceptible like the physical world around us. And that's the world we live in. The outside world is clear. The spiritual world is a bit of a... Now watch this. This is the key line for today. The Pasuk in Parsha Bo describes the first night of Pesach. It is a watch night, a lel shimarim for Hashem to take them out of the land of Mitzrayim. Here's the key two words. This night, Halayla Hazeh is Hashem's watching all the sons of Israel throughout their generation. There seems to be like a contradiction within this phrase. 
Lila is darkness, is lack of clarity. Ze, throughout Chumash, is something that you can point to and see with clarity. We just had Hachodesh, Hazel Lachem. Right, Ze Yitnu. Ze is something you can point to, which means... Exactly. No, they were able to point to God. That's what the measure says exactly. That was a good example. The first night of Pesach is called this night. Night symbolized Hester, blurriness. The Seder night is this night. The bottom of 7b, on the night of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the concealed truth of the world. Or the night of the world became so clear and visible, it could almost be pointed with the finger. Look, everything is godliness. Here is the creator who runs the world. And that's why we say in the Seder night, Hashem comes down and nobody else. It is a night where you have that clarity that Hashem is in control. In fact, in the Arrow and A, David HaMelech describes the night of Pesach as Laila Kayom Yair. It is a night that is enlightened like the day. It's bright as day. What happened? Right, exactly. The inspiration of that revelation of divinity returns every year on the night of its Yemitzrayim. On every Yantif, Hal is only recited by day. On Seder night, we say it at night, twice. Because it is a night that is not night, it's a night that is day. And now we can appreciate Manishtana ha Halayla Hazet, when it should be Halayla Hazot. Because tonight is Halayla Hazet. Tonight is the night of Zeh. And I'm trying to understand what is it that tonight is the night of such clarity. As we sit around the Seder table, recounting the miracles of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we can connect to the wonderful godly revelation of that time and make Hashem's existence a basic tangible reality in our hearts. Idea number one, that is the goal of Seder night, is we come closer to Hashem with clarity of vision. That's why we end the Seder night, Echad Mi We could be singing here the whole day, right? Echad Elokeinu Shema Shemaim Uva Aretz. Va'asa Kodesh Baruch Hu Chad Gadja. The goal of the night is Rebaro Shalolam. That I feel, I know, I sense. And that's why I'll just add here parenthetically, I've said over the years, my favorite Haggadahs, are Haggadahs that have stories in it. I like better the first of Rabbi Spiro's Touched by a Seder, Rabbi Prusansky, Night of Watching. Why I like these Haggadahs is not only do they have vorts, they have stories. And I feel it's a real imperative during the meal. Instead of talking about, oh, I don't think there's anything on the table to talk about this year. It seems pretty, we've had a really quiet year this year. To, to tell stories of what? You could tell your own family stories of Ashkacha Prati, right? When my mother-in-law, she should live and be well, she's 93, Kanainara, when she would be biased for Pesach Seder, she would always tell during the meal what it was like to be in France during the war, concentration camp, being saved, right? To, to, but to bring it home, to tell stories where the people at your Seder will walk away with that, Ah, that feeling that Hashem really what? Is here, is present. That's the goal of the night. And that's the goal. See, for you see, I mean, trying. It's not marbe in vortlach. It's marbe in bringing emuna into our lives. And that's why we said the mitzvah of Igad Tel Vincha is a fascinating mitzvah because most of our children know the mitzvah, the story of Sipri Yitzami trying better than I do, right? They've had much better teachers than I had. So I'm going to tell them the story, yes, because I'm telling them from my perspective of life. And I've experienced Hashem in ways over my life that they can't even possibly understand. Am I making sense? Yeah.
The second idea, because we have to fly here, the second idea is in source 10. Let's do the second paragraph here. The second goal of the night on the Pasuk. Did I lose you? Second paragraph in 10? Second paragraph in 10. V'chein katav ibn Ezra. Al ha-pasuk. Anochi Hashem alokecha asher tzaytiche meretz Yitzrayim ibay savadim. Shekatav ki yitziat Mitzrayim v'akaras ha-tov haba mimena. He shemechayevet akiyum ha-mitzvos. Did you ever wonder what's the connection between I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt and from the bondage of slave, house of slavery? I am the Lord your God and because I took you out, therefore as hakara satov, otherwise it's so hard to translate gratitude, indebtedness, thank you. How'd you know? Yes, Do I sound it? Um, you have... Uh, um, we are obligated to serve the Rebbe of Shalom. And, and that's what the mitzvahs are all about. I'm not doing it because I have to do it. I'm doing it because I feel Hakar Satov, indebted to you, Hashem. 11. How do you feel this, Hakar Satov? Through telling all the different parts of the story. When you go into details, you feel more indebted. Oh, thanks a lot for all that you've done. It's different then. Thank you so much for picking me up and going shopping with me and carrying my groceries home and putting them away. Do you feel the difference? I mean, it's like night and day. The more details you offer, the more it becomes a much more genuine type of gratitude. You know, I, I hate when I get thank you notes where they write, thank you so much. <laughs> what are you thanking me for? I don't know, just thank you so much. When they say thank you so much for, and they say the gift, and we are going to use it at, wow, you really appreciated what? My purchase. The greatest one was recently I got an email. <clears throat> thank you so much for your gift and for joining our simcha. I wasn't at the simcha and I didn't give a gift. <laughs> Source 12. But thanks anyway, you know. <laughs> the really, the two come together, and that is in the bracket. 12, it's under 10. Your emuna is going to grow the more you feel connected to Hashem. When I feel all that Hashem has done for me in my life, when I'm able to focus in on all the kindnesses, when I'm able to really look at the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim and see step after step how Hashem was there holding our hands and helping us, all of this helps me be able to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with Hashem. So the two goals of the night that we have to try to experience, and they're really interconnected, is one, a deeper, richer understanding of Hashem's existence, and two, deeper gratitude for all that Hashem has done. With this in mind, now let's get back to Dayenu. On the bottom left of this page, desti Darkness to Destiny. Rabbi Bernstein. These questions cause certain commentators to explain the intent of the song somewhat differently. Here goes. For each and every level of kindness that Hashem bestowed upon us, there is a corresponding level of expressing gratitude la makom towards Hashem, which is aleinu incumbent upon us. For every level that Hashem has given me, 
I have la makom, a responsibility to say thank you. There's a profound message here with regards to the concept of gratitude. Even if the kindness in 14 bestowed upon the person is a process that includes many stages, he should not wait until the process is over for saying thank you. Rather, each and every stage is deserving of one's gratitude. And really, as Rabbi Prozansky points out in Night of Watching in 16, I'm on the next page, source 16. For most people, the more someone is the presence in their lives, helping them out and caring for them in a wide variety of ways, the less the person is likely to think about the many specific acts of kindness the person performs for them. And the greatest example of that are children to parents. 99.9% .9 of children do not walk home every day and say, oh, mommy, thank you so much for doing the dishes and for washing the floor and for doing my clothes and for ironing my clothes and for making lunch. And maybe when they get married, they say, oh, mom, thanks for everything you've done for me, <laughs> if we're lucky, right? Why? Because it's a given. That's mommy's job. You know, it's like the kid who's asked, what does your mom do all day? Nothing. She sits home and does nothing all day, right? That's, that's a good demonstration, and everything just happens. If this is true of our sense of gratitude to our parents, how much more so is it true for our gratitude toward Hashem, whose continuous acts of incredible kindness seem to just happen? He created us with great compassion and wisdom, provides everything we need from... To, the, to live heals us from sickness, sustains the world around us. We lump it all together in a general modim. Rav Gamliel explains the Balagadah's teaching, trying at this point in Seder to help us shake off that mindless attitude to our Hashem's kindness by detailing all the incredible things he has done for us since he took us as a nation. We experience a multitude of specific expressions of Hashem's infinite love and instill in ourselves a great gift of gratitude. With the word dayenu, we recognize that in truth, Hashem is not required to give us anything. Therefore, had he not given us even one of the... Thank you. I'm glad you're listening. Therefore, had he given us even one of the many benefits that we have, we should feel dayenu, it would have been enough. And this, in 18, is the way Ramas Yisyahu explains from the Malbim. This is the precursor to Halal. In order to really get into Lefiche Chanachtu Chayovim Lahodos, you have to feel excited. To just feel excited he took us out of Egypt, it's nice. But when you start thinking, and that's where I begin with, where we get caught up, where we, we start singing Dayenu and we stop thinking of Dayenu, Ilu Asabahem Shvatim. Yes, Rebetzin. Yeah. Good. Are you promoting the book again? There's a book available for sale. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. But both say, work with me here because I'm running out of time. I haven't even began. 19, that is what malo means. Le'ale. Ulikalais. Says the Malbim, Ma'alot means to praise. How much praise is incumbent upon me to give to Hashem? That's what Dayenu is about. It's not about how much Hashem has done for me, but how much I need to do for Him. Do you see how the whole night shifts? And that, my friends, getting back to what the Rebetzin said in 21, this is a limud l'chol Just like in Yitziat Mitzrayim, we have to appreciate all the details of our lives. Likewise, a person has to appreciate all that Hashem has done for him. He quotes in the bracket in 21, Rav Avram Yurovitz, why do we find people who aren't happy? The reason is because they live with a feeling of magia lahem od va'od. They have this feeling of entitlement. I deserve more. Why didn't I get this? Why didn't I get that? And if you have that feeling of I should have gotten that and I was deserving of this, then you will never be 
happy. If you have a feeling of dayenu, thank you, Hashem. I don't really deserve anything. And whatever you give me, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to acknowledge. So then you're always going to be filled with what? With happiness and joy. As Rabbi Kestenbaum says, similarly in the asterisk in 23, every person in his own situation has to contemplate the many blessings in his life and derive joy from them. We have to recognize that Hashem does not owe us anything. We start from zero. Every good thing we have is a gift from him. A person who adopts this attitude will stop viewing himself as a person who suffers and begins to view himself as a person as a mu innumerable gifts and blessings as well as some difficulties. There's a maisa that's brought in a number of the Haggadahs of of, of a Yerushalmi Yid who was very into, as many Yerushalmi Yidim are, into his matzahs. He would go to the field and be with them when they cut the wheat for, for the matzah. I'm talking about like all nine yards. And these people would bake their matzahs, as many people do today, Erev Pesach, yeah? And he had his matzahs on a top shelf. These were, he went out for a short while, and his grandchildren came in. And they were normal grandchildren. And things went flying, and among the things that went flying was the and they came crashing down. At that moment, there was like, I think terror is the best. They were frozen. They realized that this was what? This was, this was bad news. At that moment, he walks in, and he immediately apprises the situation. It wasn't hard. <laughs> and this is what he said. He turned to the Rebona Shalolim and he said, Hashem, I have to thank you. Not everyone gets married. Not everyone who gets married has children. Not everyone who gets married have children who get married. And even if they get married, not all of them have children. For me to have been blessed with children and grandchildren is a blessing. I want to thank you, Hashem, for all the blessings in my life. My friends, this is such a different mindset. Dayenu. Let's not focus on what we don't have. Let's focus on the blessings in our lives. So idea number one for the night of Pesach is the idea of being able to show appreciation. To show appreciation in a detailed way to focus on all the blessings we have in our lives, and Dayenu, for each and everything that I got, it is incumbent upon me to say thank you. I don't walk around feeling like, that's all you've given me? That's it? Where's the rest? Dayenu. The second idea of Amuna. There's a new Haggadah that came out this year called Rav Ruven Feinstein on the Haggadah. I'm on the next page. It says Rav Ruven Feinstein on the Haggadah. It says 26, it looks like a 25. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> Dayenu is not about declaring that we did not need Hashem to do these kindnesses for us. Of course we needed them all. We are ob obligated to find Hashem and believe in him the same way Avram Vinu did. We thank Hashem that he made it e so easy for us to do that by affording us a history rich with his providence. Thus, Dayenu is really about declaring, here's the key, that even if Hashem had not to continue to reveal himself to us openly again and again, we would still have sufficient evidence of his providence to believe in him forever. 
And it's also about thanking him for relating with us so openly that we can more easily recognize him and relate to him. Let me explain this. We have an obligation to know Hashem. We, similar to Avram Avinu, would have to go to all lengths of the earth to be able to have that relationship and knowledge of Hashem. But you know what Hashem did for us? He did us a taiva. Instead of making it so hard, he mamish what? Laid it out for us. And that's Dayena. Let's give examples. Elu of the 29. Elu Hotsianu Mimitsraim. Had he taken us out of Egypt? Veloa Sabahem Shvatim Dayenu. It would have been enough for us to experience Yitzhia Mitzrayim. If Hashem would have redeemed Klai Yisrael from Egypt, that occurrence alone would have served to demonstrate to us that there's Hashem in the world who acts in our best interest. That alone is worthy to say, Dayenu, that we would know and acknowledge God. Ah, but you also what? You also destroyed their God. And I learn about the Mida connected Mida, measure for measure, the way you work in this world. Wow, Hashem, al achas kama tova kula mechupelet aleinu, that you did all of this. Any one of these things would have been sufficient without going beyond to know your existence, Hashem, which means that our obligation is to look at all 15 steps and to see how they are keys in being able to see different aspects and manifestation of Hashem in our lives. So for, yeah? Yes, that's it. That, that's the message. That always Hashem is present and he gives us ways of revelation. Yeah. Just for that, that's it. No, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. And we have to be able to yeah, 100%. That's the idea, for example, to give one example of the man. He didn't have to give us the man. We could have survived on whatever food in the desert. Why does he give us the man? To teach us this idea. That everyone gets exactly what they need. That Hashem is watching over us down to the... Thank you, Hashem, for giving us that lesson. Thank you, Hashem, for making it so clear that you're so intimately involved in my life. On this level, my friends, we can appreciate, which I'm, 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 I'm alluding to, I'm not doing it inside to 35, the idea, these two ideas of Emuna and Akar Satov. So I look at Dayenu and I say, Dayenu, thank you for each and everything. I have to give thanks. I don't take anything for granted. I look at Dayenu, thank you, Hashem, for each level. It allows me to get to know you closer. Again, my obligation to Hashem in terms of finding him and having a relationship with him. That's my responsibility. That's Matzah and the Arba Kosos. We've spoken about this over the years. The Shlach Kadosh, the three matzos correspond to the Avos HaKadoshim, and the four cups of wine correspond to the Imahos. And there's correlations. The most classic is the fourth cup is Le'a Imenu. The fourth cup is the Halal. And Le'a is the Pelech It's giving thanks. Rachel Imenu is Yosef Atzatik, who's the Mashpir, which is benching. Right, it's Torah. I'm not doing it. I just did it, but I'm not doing it anymore. <coughs> it's hard to hold myself back sometimes. I work on it. Matzah is emuna. That's the avos. It's clarity. It's, matzah is called lechem de musa. Michlo de musa, the bread of faith. When I eat the matzah, I focus. I know the rebuttal shalom exists. We spoke about last week when we eat the matzah to feel like that newborn child being held by Hashem, that we're completely in Hashem's embrace. He's carrying us, he's holding us. 
the wine. What is wine? And we know the wine has to be red wine, better, right? Because that's the blood force. It's giving thanks. It's appreciation. And that's the job of the mother, the emotions, the passion. That's what the mother brings into the relationship. And that's what the night is about. And so Rabbi Pinkus himself says, we have the Arba Kosos throughout the night. Matzi eat at one time. The cups of wine are throughout because the emotions of the night have, did I lose you? You have matzah at the meal. The wine, you have a kiddush, the middle of Haggadah, after benching, at the end of the Seder, it's really divided throughout, right? Matzah's one unique time, middle of the Seder meal, is because passion has to really permeate the entirety of our being. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's the same idea because it brings you to this ecstasy and passion. And, and while the Kohen has to have the clarity of mind, we need to have the passion. He doesn't need that to get there. We need that, yeah. My friends, let's, uh, let, let's, let's come together here for the third level, which is very powerful. To, to, to move us into the third level, there's a, a story that only living in Eretz Israel you can really appreciate of a fellow talking about drinking who drank a little bit too much in Purim. And he's driving, and a police officer stops him and says, um, I think you're a little bit... Um, Inebriated is a good word. He said, you know what, I, I am. I did drink a little bit too much, but I'm telling you, police officer, I'm driving where? Straight home. I'm just going straight home, so don't give me points. Just give me two on your check of fine, and I'm going to go straight home. Okay. A few minutes later, he continues driving, gets pulled over again. I think you're a little bit. Look, I'm driving straight home. Give me uh, the fourth time. He says to the police officer, you guys have nothing better to do than to stop people along the road. The police officer says, look, <coughs> for another 200 shekels, I will help you get out of this traffic circle that you've been in for the last 20 minutes. <coughs> My friends, that is a good description of our lives. <coughs> We're driving home in traffic circles. And then we wonder why we've reached where? Nowhere. Nowhere. As was mentioned in 34, which you can't even read, so don't even try, ma'alot comes from steps. Velo ta'ale ma'alot al misbechi. These are 15 steps lamakom for us to get closer to Hashem. Yeah. Once I understand that I have emuna and I have a kar satov, that then needs to lead me, I don't know if that was English, I tried, to a state of my avodah Hashem is different. Just to feel a muna and to feel a karasatov and I don't allow it to impact me, go to Shelfin, which I can't translate. Traffic circle. You get nowhere. We know the Ritvan 36 in his commentary on the Pesach Haggadah. He states that these 15 levels of favor correspond to the 15 steps in the base of Migdash that stand from the woman's courtyard, Ezra's Nashim, to the man's courtyard, Ezra's Yisrael. They also correspond, as was mentioned, to the 15 Shiramalos in Tehillim. And during the festive ceremony of Simchas Beitz the Levim stood on these step, steps and sang. 
We also know in the bracket in 36 that Hashem created the world with the letters Yud and He. Ki beka Hashem sur olamim. For in Yud K, Hashem is the strength of the world. Olam Haba was created with the letter Yud. Olam Hase was created with the letter He. The Maharal in 38 adds, the reason Hashem created the universe with the same Yud He, possessing numerical value of 15, is to teach us that the world contains 15 levels represented by the name Yud He. Every Jew must ascend from the lowermost level to the uppermost level. The 15 steps of the Beis Amigdash represent these 15 levels. It's about moving to levels of Kedusha. And that's what Dayenu is about in 39. I start, Shel Saitanu Mimitzrayim. I start tonight leaving Egypt, which is level number one. And I need to ascend until where? Binyam, the, the Beis Amigdash to a level of Tara, to level of purity. The night of Pesach is reminding me that tonight, on whatever small level it is, I need to move. In my own life, in whatever small area that I have to extricate myself from my narrowness, in whether it's an Amida, it's in a mitzvah, in whatever area that I can be able to move forward, that I can build a mini base Hamikdash in place of where there was Tuma. Change needs to happen. That's the goal of the night. And that's what Rafinka Satzel says. If you wake up the next morning and you were the same person as the day before, you've what? You've missed the boat. This explains a, an idea that we saw last week that now has a deeper meaning to this. Last week we spoke about the, I'm in 41 and 42, we spoke about the Targum Yonasan, that the night of Pesach, the Jewish people, Vasatchem al Kanfein Nishorim, were carried on eagles' wings to the Haramaria to have the Kurban Pesach there. But now, my friends, we had, and then brought back, we understand it on a deeper level. That in the bracket was a symbolic act for all generations. And every Pesach night, Hashem would elevate Yisrael to the supreme spiritual level, the Kedusha, the Beis Hamikdash. That's us. What went on the night of Pesach, literally they went from Yitzhia Mitzrayim to where? To the place of the Binyan Beis Hamikdash. That happens to us every Seder night. And that's how the Tiferet Shlomo explains that the Pesach says, Matzo shall be eaten in a holy place in the courtyard of the Omoed. Shall they eat it? And the asterisk in, second asterisk in 42. On every Pesach night, every Jew must achieve a level of Kedusha, tantamount to the Kedusha of the Beit Sabikdash. Thus, when he consumes the Matzo, so be fulfilling the requirement in a holy place in the courtyard of the whole Omoed, they shall eat it. He draws a comparison from the, of the commentary of the Targum Yonasan. That's our mindset, that we're not just eating matzahs, we're eating matzahs in a holy place. Now we'll add, we could add a lot, that 15 is also found in another number on Seder night, and that is the 15 simanim. Kadesh Orchats are also 15. And there are Sfarim that link the two. The most obvious linkage is the last one. Nirza, Lishana Haba. I told you we could sing all day today. And Uvana Beitza Vechira, building the Beitza Vedas. That the two 15s are linked. We begin the Seder. Let's take a look in 44. Oh, don't do this to me. Um, this coincides wonderfully with the notion that the author of the God that formulated the 15 simonim to correspond to 15 levels in acts of divine favor, he intended to teach us that just on this holy night, a Kaddish Baruch who elevates us to all 15 levels and stages from the bottom to the top, even though we're not yet worthy. Therefore, we begin the Seder by reciting these 15 simonim. They represent our request that we be elevated to all 15 levels on this special night. We conclude the recounting of the events of Yitzhak Mitzrayim by enumerating the 15 divine acts of favor that Hashem performed on our behalf. 
the night is bookmarked by these 15. My friends, I want to, I want to share on this level what I believe Dayenu is about, and this will be our final idea to take home with us today. There's a beautiful story that Rabbi Spiro tells. It's a story of a Rav in an organization called Lev Shomea, which is, I have no idea what it is, but it was a, a speech to Rabbanim and Mechanchim. And the rabbi who spoke at this convention cried the entire time he told this story. Listen to the story. The story is told by Rosh Yeshiva, who had to go fundraise in America. You've heard of such a concept? It was his first time ever doing this. And he was in New York, and he had a Talmud drive him around. And they had a bottle of water with them, and uh, they're driving, and it was very hot. And the water ran out, and they wanted to buy some more water. So they stopped at a, a gas station, and the only place to buy water was at a non-kosher restaurant. I'm not talking halacha here. They felt the way they were dressed, it was what? It was inappropriate. So they, the, the Talmud called up a friend and said, you know, is there any place we can just get, you know, something to drink, something to eat? You know, he said, you know what, there is a, a Jewish uh, community like 10, 15 minutes away. They have a kosher store there. You can eat something. He said, great. So they, uh, they go to this kosher store, and they pick up whatever they want to eat, and they go to pay. And the cashier is a young boy in his 20s who you could, t you, I don't have to tell you how you can tell, so don't ask me. You could tell that he was from, but holding on by what? A threat. A threat. How you can tell, we could discuss another time. The boy looks at this rabbi, the rabbi looks at this boy as if there's what? A familiarity and they can't place it. And they buy it and they sit down to eat. And the boy comes over to the rabbi and says, can I ask you what your name is? So the rabbi tells him his name. He said, I was a student of yours. He says, what's your name? Usher. Usher, you were my best Talmud. Do you remember when you asked those three bomb kashas? A bomb kasha means like a question you can't even, like, wow. Did I even wrote them down in my notebook? And the boy started to cry. How come you never told me then that they were bomb kashas and that you wrote them down in my notebook? Had you told me that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So the rabbi said, I'm ready to stop my trip right now, go back to Eretz Yisrael and show you this notebook. So he said, no, no, I'm not gonna stop the rub from his trip. A few weeks later, Asher comes to Eretz Yisrael and visits the rabbi. And he says to him, do you remember what Masecha we were learning? Yeah. He pulls out that notebook and he shows him exactly in that page. Usher asked three bomb kashas, black and white. And Usher turns to him and says, is it too late? He says, it's never too late. Usher today is a Marbitz Torah Mufla in Ashto today. Dayenu is about appreciating everything around us, from the people around us to Hashem around us. We have to celebrate every step of the way. Sometimes we meet people who have an all or nothing attitude. It's all black or white. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not at the end, I'm a nothing. Dayenu is, it is enough to celebrate every step of accomplishment. And my friends, this is so important if you work with children or grandchildren who are helping you in your house. It is so easy to say, oh my gosh, we have so much more to do. This is all we've done? <laughs> Dayenu, wow, you cleaned that one drawer in four hours so nicely. <laughs> Wow, I am so appreciative of, of what, what you've done. Amazing. Now, absolutely. 
also to the Ozarit, you have to treat her that way? My friends, you have to be able to have Dayenu appreciation for every step of the way. And it's not just in cleaning drawers, it's in all of our growth and movement forward. It's only when we're able to celebrate we're working on ourselves. Others around them are working on themselves that will be able to climb up the 15 steps. It's about appreciation. And that's our real depth of our relationship with Hashem. My friends, I wish everybody a Chag Kasher V'Sameach. And I just want to reiterate that there is this great Sefer. It's great to learn with a friend or friends outside. Grab it.